brown heron. Step one. For this fly, we're going to use a, uh, a little bit of a larger spay hook and some 6 aught black wax thread. Bring that thread right back to the hook point. Step 2. Now we're going to tie in some small silver mylar tinsel, tying the gold side facing us so that we get the silver side exposed. We're going to make about an eighth of an inch of uh, silver tinsel as a tag for the fly. Step three. Now we're going to take some uh, gold oval medium tinsel. And we're going to peel off the, uh, the gold coating right down to the uh, silky, glossy core of it. About the little bit over the distance of the body of the fly. Now take and tie this underneath the hook shank so that the gold, where the gold starts on our uh, ribbing, it's butted right up against our silver tag. And the rest of the flossy portion is going to be tied right underneath the fly. You can see there it all butts up nice and tight. And this just helps keep the fly nice and neat, although this is more of a practical version of a spay fly, not so much a traditional exact way to tie it. So this one won't be hanging on your wall, it'll be out no, in the river. One, this one will be stuck in the corner of a fish's mouth. <laughs> Trim that off nice and neat. Right about where the hook is doubled over. You can see there where it's the eye's been doubled back. Keep the body nice and consistent. This is about how long our first portion of the body is going to be. Step four. I'm going to tie in a couple strands of uh, orange floss. You could use silk or floss, whatever you have available. It's going to be about two-thirds the length of the remaining body that we have here. And again, butt that up underneath, tying in underneath, right up against where our ribbing and our tinsel left off. So you're making very tight wraps there and nothing is showing in between. Yeah, you want your wraps to be fairly t close together. That way it keeps the body nice and neat and tidy. Making sure our uh, floss doesn't get twisted while we're wrapping. Bring it to here and tie it off. Step five. And for this next piece, we're going to use a uh, piece of uh, blue reared pheasant, which is to a uh, substitute for heron. We're going to tie it in by the tip with the top of the feather facing up or towards us. That way the fibers will lay in nice and neat and lay back when we're done. Step six. Now we're going to dub in a bit of seal in an orange or a peach or a salmon color. Make sure this is nice and tight. You want the tip of the dubbing noodle nice and tight. And seal is a bit wiry, so you want to try your best to keep it tight as possible. You can see there it's a little bit of a pain to try and keep it nice and close to the hook shank. That's about the last third there, isn't it? Pretty close. Just add a tiny bit more here. You want to leave a fair bit of room for the head. Don't be shy to leave uh, a little more than you normally would. Because we're going to have to tie in a collar and a wing as well. Step seven. 
now we're going to take and wind our pheasant forward. Ring neck pheasant rump also works not too uh, bad for for a spay hackle like this. You can see all the fibers wrapping backwards. I notice you're giving very exact and a fairly wide uh, wrap there. I am. I'm trying to uh, space it out nicely so we can use pretty much the whole usable portion of the feather. And you can see I've peeled away the phyllo plume there just to keep it out of the way so we're tying directly onto the quill. I'm going to tie that off on the side of the hook, not the top. Step 8. Now take and reverse wrap our ribbing. And this is going to help uh, reinforce the uh, pheasant that we've tied in as well as create a bit of a rib. Fairly wide uh, wraps on this. I'm going to make sure to keep all those fibers out of the way. You want them to only cross the quill when you wrap, not any of the fibers. Don't tie any of the fibers down. Keep picking those fibers out. So you're like clearing a path, I guess, for the, uh, exactly. the tinsel. Pulling the fibers away from the quill in order to wrap it through. This is probably the clearest example of why you would reverse wrap because you can actually see it holding down the uh, quill quite clearly. Mm -hmm. Take your time with this and it'll help keep all those fibers from getting folded backwards. And again, tie this in on the side, not the top of the hook. You can see there, it's on the side. Has to give it more room in the when you're tying on the. Uh... Create a bit of a base for tying in the wing. Mm -hmm. Step nine. Now what we've done is taken a piece of teal flank, as long as as long a piece of flank as we can find, and we've peeled off. Uh, we've cut the tip off and peeled off one side of the uh, teal feather. Normally we'd uh, peel off the other side and wrap the feather the other direction, but uh, since this is the best feather we could find, we're uh, wrapping it towards us. And you wrap it so that the uh, fibers actually go to the back again? The fibers are, yes, are, are wrapped towards the back or lay over the back of the fly. So you've tied off to the side again? Tie off underneath or to the side. And again, this is going to leave a space and for our wing. It's nice to have a little bit longer teal, but make the best uh, of what you have. Step 10. Now, this is some bronze mallard, and we're going to use this for the wing. And you want two uh, opposing uh, kind of flank or, or bronze mallard feathers. and get two equal pieces. Is there any particular uh, rhyme or reason to how wide those pieces are that you tear out? You want to have them so that uh, they're going to be not so thick that they're going to compress when you tie them on top of the hook. Mm -hmm. See when you match those up there. Yeah, you want to have the outside of the feathers facing out. You can see there we're just evening them up a bit. There's uh, different ways to tie this in. You can tent tent them or or tie them so that they're uh, so that they flare outwards this is just going to give uh, the just add a wing and give it the fly a bit of a balance so we're going to tie them directly on top of the hook so you're just sort of fitting it in there to see how it's going to work exactly just measuring it up you can see how they're pressed together. And I've trimmed them to length so that the uh, end of the wing is just up to the end or slightly extending past the tail end of the fly. How come you unwound it there? It just uh, wasn't fitting in there quite right? Yeah, the feathers are getting too compressed. Should be a little more tented. The, f the wing should be a little wider. Seeing as uh, it's just a practical fishing fly, we're not going to worry about it too much. Step 11. I'm going to come in and whip finish. The 
really nice thin low water fly and it has a bit of a life kind of a marabou effect with those soft pheasant feathers hanging back like that.